Whitehaven mother, Hertha shot the gunshots that took her son's life. Now she is speaking publicly in hopes of getting help in finding his killer. That is part of this week's Manhunt Monday. I go to church. I pray a lot. Because of the days that I really don't want to go on. But I know I have to go on. Cassandra Osby is heartbroken after the death of her son. Memphis police say 31-year-old Larry Moss was sitting in a car in the parking lot of the Mill Creek Apartments in Whitehaven back in March when he was shot. Osby had just walked into her apartment. It wasn't no time. We heard a lot of gunshots. We was hearing gunshots. So we, we took cover to the ground because some of the bullets entered my house. Osby says she and her younger son barely escaped the gunfire. When the shooting stopped, we went outside. And we wouldn't on the side, the driver's side, a Larry car. And that's when I seen the Larry. He was gone. Memphis police say witnesses saw several people shooting at Moss. His mother says he didn't have any enemies. When they took my son, they also took a part of me. It's hard, really, to go on because I don't understand why anyone would do that to him. Osby hopes his killers are turned in and arrested. They need to be caught. I look at them as being a coward. Someone to do what they did. They don't, they, don't need to, they don't need to be on the streets. If you know who killed Larry Moss, you're urged to call Crime Stoppers at 901-528-CASH. Your tip could help get some dangerous criminals off the street and put $4,000 cash in your pocket. Shit, man. Did she say, did she say anything good about him? Uh, say he didn't have any enemies. Okay, that's the only thing I heard. And... He'd have no enemies, but several motherfuckers are shooting at him. Come on, man. That's wild. Yeah, that, that's crazy. That shows you how dangerous it is. If she's right, if she's telling the truth, God damn, that's a dangerous fucking <laughs> yeah, that's new sat in the living room of her southeast apartment this morning and could not stop the tears as she talked about her son. He never been in no conversation. He never been locked up. He never had a jaywalking ticket. He just was one of them kids that I just try to raise a sweet young man in the city. That's it. That's all I try to do as a single mother, raise my children. The apartment walls are covered with pictures of Brandon in uniforms and cap and gown. Awards for him and his siblings are everywhere. From the time I gave birth to Brandon, he was one of the cutest, sweetest little baby boy. He always got a smile on his face. He was always happy. Around 3.30 in the morning of September 6th, D.C. police found Brandon shot inside his mother's Toyota Corolla near the intersection of 18th and Minnesota Avenue Southeast. Mm, I know exactly where that's at. 3 o'clock in the morning. I got to see, do they live there? Like, this is crazy. Like, 3.30 in the morning around there, that's the trenches. It's, it's trenchy. The trenches is all around that, but like, you can call that the trenches too. It's, mm, it's a great young kid. A lot of these kids, man, your mother, like my mom the same way. She, she would have never known. Anything I did if I never got arrested for it, she had to come get me out. She, she would have never known. Corolla, near the intersection of 18th and Minnesota Avenue Southeast. Police say a driver cut him off and as many as two gunmen stepped out and opened fire. Brandon survived for two days before he passed away. Police are working on a theory. Now, this was a hit. This wasn't no accident. They was gunning for him. Minnesota Avenue Southeast. Police say a driver cut him There's off. There's probably a reason as many he's as driving two gunmen late. stepped out like and opened fire. Under, it's probably less suspicious. I don't know. 
southeast. Police say a driver cut him off and as many as two gunmen stepped out and opened fire. Brandon survived for two days before he passed away. Police are working on a theory the 23-year-old mover, or even the car he was in, may have been mistaken for someone else. News 4 has obtained video just released by D.C. police showing what investigators believe is the car the shooters were riding in. The morning he was shot, Brandon's mom thinks he came to this gas station here on Minnesota Avenue to fill up her tank and to buy some allergy medication. She believes that he actually made it here because when the police found his car, it was pointed in the direction as if he was heading home. Like you said, my brother wasn't in the street. No, no kid, no, no man, no woman, no child deserves to lose their life, to lose their life at any means necessary. So for him to be taken away from us is, like I said, it's devastating and unacceptable. DC police say after the funeral, detectives were putting up flyers in the neighborhood where Brandon was killed and someone came up behind them and tore them all down. My heart will run. And he wasn't in the streets. He wasn't in the streets. He got killed like that. And people are tearing the flyers down as soon as the police put them up, like right in front of the police. Police say after the funeral, detectives were putting up flyers in the neighborhood where Brandon was killed, and someone came up behind them and tore them all down. My heart was broken. They took everything from me when they did it. Everything from me. On October 14th, Taloria and her family plan to have a march and rally. They all want justice for Brandon. In the district, Paul Wagner, News 4. Wow. Jesus Christ. Shit. He really does come off as a hit, though, if, if they swerved in front of him and, and jumped out with two guys to kill shooting at him. That's definitely a hit. It's just like, damn, they say he wasn't in the streets. If you believe that, God damn, this is a dangerous community. Like, that's the second kid we heard what in the streets. They, like, got killed, like, the most brutal way. To the Sunday morning, it happened. Shit, man. Fuck, man. 